Welcome back. You're here with Connect. My name is Randy Shabilo. I've invited Chris Lefebvre of Lefebvre & Company out of Victoria, BC. A whole bunch of excitement happening in Southeast Riversdale, River Landing, next to the Farmer's Market. I uh, thought we'd invite uh, Chris to tell us a bit about himself, the project called The Banks, and some of the exciting things happening down in the Riverbank, uh, Southeast Riversdale, and those parts of the city that uh, sometimes long forgotten, but opportunities await. So Chris, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Saskatoon, where it's always like this. Oh yeah. In, in June. In June, yeah, maybe yes. in the middle of winter. It certainly wasn't, but um, no, it's good to be here. I always enjoy seeing you. You're the guy that stimulated some of my development thoughts when I first started wandering through this city some years ago. So um, it's uh, my pleasure to be with you now. Awesome. Can you tell us, uh, when you look at, at Saskatoon, uh, with, with the work that you've done in Victoria, some of the, uh, the recognition, when we look back at the South Downtown Plan and everything that we had envisioned, we had looked to some of your projects in Victoria with the rail yards. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that, how you got involved with that? Well, yeah. Um, my work in Victoria has been predominantly either heritage renewal or what I would call new multifamily housing in urban renewal zones. So when I came here and started looking at Riversdale very specifically, I saw the potential for urban renewal. And um, it mirrors not the heritage work, but certainly the work that I've done in Victoria, very similar location, close in, um, some industrial past, um, need for some renewal, and therefore, you know, it, it suited my appetite. Um, and uh, relative to what I've done in Victoria, it, that has helped me. But there are headwinds here to work in your environment, economic environment. Um, it'd be wrong for me to sit here and just think that it's um, a wonderful sunny place and I can walk in the door and just do it. I mean, you've got other fine developers uh, and uh, relative to what I'm doing there, I'm very aware that the costs here are not the same as they are um, in Vancouver or even Toronto for that matter. Sure. So there's some headwinds uh, that I'm dealing with and I haven't been able to move quite as quickly as I'd hoped, but um, I'm here, I'm strong and um, I'm putting all the pieces together. It was exciting when uh, we saw the, the land go up for tender and your bid be the successful one that was given the nod by the city, uh, albeit that uh, there was no others in the competition. The, uh, the tenders that did go out drew some interest, but uh, with your involvement, uh, your track record, uh, your stellar uh, reputation from the West Coast coming here, what was it that brought you to, first of all, Saskatchewan and then Saskatoon? and eventually the banks in phase two of River Landing. And also you didn't say, and to be the lone bidder. <laughs> um, not that I fuss about that, I can assure yeah. you. Well, the, the, the economy of the prairies is, is a known fact. Um, I'm a guy that wanders. I've done a lot of work in many different cities, not just in Canada, but in the States. And I wandered into Saskatchewan with, with intrigue and then became comfortable in this city, although I looked at other cities. So in that regard, I saw a dynamic in your city where there was growth, there was prosperity, and there was change. And as a result of that, as a developer, I saw a niche, particularly over there, where I thought that I could be instrumental with my thought processes and the type of product that I would design for it. And that's what I have done. Um, and I'm very proud of the design. I mean, you've got good architects in this city, but I brought Josh Backer, who is um, somebody who'd done projects for me before. Um, he was the man who was the brains and the design behind Granville Island. I felt with the farmer's market and that sort of raw, carnal feel to that zone, he'd be a good man. And as soon as I got him here, he became as excited as I was. So there's a little bit of the poetry um, that having been said, I'm very mindful of the money that's been spent by the city on the waterfront of this city. Um, it's magnificent, the endeavor that they have put in. Um, it's been well done physically, maybe in some places too well done. Um, and as a result of that, it beckons for, for development. And I'm also aware, though, 
beckoning or not, there's been occasions where others have not managed to pull it off. And um, I remain mindful of that. There, are, there were reasons. It wasn't just because they were people who didn't know what they were doing. They've not found it easy. And uh, it's one thing to build a two-story wood frame house. It's another to get in the ground with water running in every direction and uh, cement, which is 50% higher than it is anywhere else in the country, to be a predominant ingredient of your development. And all of a sudden, whoa. Um, these numbers are significant, and uh, that's what happens in boom cycles. I mean, it's the Fort McMurray influence, you know? And, sure. Um, so I keep going back to that for good reason, because I'm not the only person who deals with that aspect. But the flip side of that is that when somebody like me as a developer gets through that and creates a product, that product has got a real significance, and the market doesn't need to recognize it. It has already recognized it, that this is an ordinary product. This is creative. This is uh, architecturally quite different. And um, as a result of that, um, I have certainly been blessed with um, very, very good uh, acceptance of the, the, the residential component of the development. The commercial component, which is the ground floor, um, will have its day. As, as, as the project emerges, I'm very happy and satisfied that users w will appear for those zones, which will add another dimension to the vitality of the project. So all the, uh, it's kind of comical in a way when we uh, take buildings down and put up a parking lot. Now we're taking down the parking lot, putting up a building. and. Uh, we've been looking at things like the, uh, the absorption of the parking that's there currently. Uh, what can you tell us about the parking with your completed structure and the number of residents that will be there eventually? Well, a couple of things about the parking, uh, because I know it's a, it's a good conversation piece. When they first built Granville Island, they said, the problem with this design is there's inadequate parking. And, um, there was good contention at the time. But the, the development went ahead without the parking. And what happened was people parked some distance and they walked. And those veins of walking filtered into Granville Island. Those veins were the streets. As more people walk streets, they become more vital. And so relative to the banks, yeah, we're taking some parking off, uh, some great parking not been permanent parking. So that will displace some of the people, but there's a park just up the road. People can walk from the park. There are those veins on Riversdale, which today are becoming more enlivened, and people will walk through those zones. It will give more street presence. And just as you go along 20th and see the emergence of users and things like that, those places will be blessed with more foot traffic. So. There's a positive spin or a reality spin, and the only limitation of that is you've got to work, walk further. That's not bad for any of us. The second thing, of course, is your climate, and I am respectful there that there are winds and there are cold that do inflict it upon an individual, and that I can't do anything about. That's where we live. Relative to what's underground there, there is over 150 parking stores. But they are predominantly for the residences or the commercial. Uh, in terms of your uh, the number of condominium units, uh, there there a, a mix of housing styles in yeah. there. How many would there be? There's 134, um, and they vary from small bachelor units, which are the most affordable, of course, one bedroom, two bedroom, and townhomes. So there's a nice cross section. It's not there for just one privileged vein of, of the marketplace. It, it's a broad cross-section, and the take-up of units has spoken to that very well, um, in as much as there's been a very even take-up of units in that regard. They're not all sold, and um, they will. Um, our second phase of selling will start as we start the construction, which will be over the next few weeks. I guess that's the, the last question I'll leave you with is uh, we've had a number of false starts in River Landing and some of the other locations. 
some all well-intentioned, and I guess that is a burning question that's in the community. Uh, is Chris Lefebvre real, and is this project going to go ahead? Well, um, answer the first one. Am I real? Um, somebody could check me out and find a, a, a good history of, of developments, none of which have failed, um, which would show that I'm a reasonably substantial individual capable of a project of this size. And um, only a quick look at my website and the history of building would show that. Um, so absolutely I'm real. I've bought other properties and developed other properties in this city of a small nature. In terms of other people that have tried and failed, um, you know, I'm very sympathetic to them because it's not easy. I haven't found it easy. I found it the most difficult development that I've ever done in my career. And that's all because of one thing, costs. Um, so um, are some people saying, well, where is he? When is it going to happen? Well, I'm right here. Anybody can meet me. Um, when is it going to happen? Uh, very shortly. Um, they've got to be patient. They got to, And they also recognize just what I'm building. This is no ordinary development. This is very creative housing, architectural, not full of overkill, but um, they got to be patient to see that. So does that pressure affect me? Not much, because I know what I got to do to get a project out of the ground, and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, beating the costs up as best I can um, with labor forces that regrettably are largely not local, um, which is too bad. But when you've got to do that, it takes more time. And um, yeah, it's taken me more time than I would have thought. But um, the mayor of this city has welcomed me in a very wholehearted fashion. And so have the city staff. And um, we're getting to the start and finish line. Can't wait for it to happen, Chris. Thank you so much for well, joining us today. My pleasure. Right Always on. good to see you. I want to thank you for joining us here on Connect today and especially uh, thanking our guest Al Wallace, the Director of Planning and Development for the City of Saskatoon, and especially Chris Lefebvre from Victoria, BC, the developer uh, creating the banks at uh, Southeast Riversdale next to the Farmers Market. As always, we want to hear from you uh, at Connect. You can always reach us. Uh, tweet us at Shaw TV Connect. Visit our Facebook page. Email Shaw TV Connect at Shaw.ca or give us a call at 665 3796. I'm Randy Shavilo. We'll see you next time on Connect.